All right, everyone, welcome to Central Coast Disc Golf. This is the Innova Blue Ridge Championship at North Cove. I am Nate Perkins, and I am joined here today with my good friend, Ella Hansen. What's up, Nate? I'm excited to watch some action on this course. One of the most beautiful courses I've seen on tour so far. Just a lot of creeks and hills and beautiful trees. And we are at the North Cove Disc Golf and Leisure Club <laughs> in Marion, North Carolina. We're yep. about two hours from Charlotte and about an hour northeast of Asheville, North Carolina. Yep. What do we have on hole one here? Hole one pretty much plays here as this island green with uh, the creek on the back and the front side. There's OB left, there's OB right. You technically can lay up and kind of play a little pitch up for par strategy. Um, also with an elevated basket on a hill. It's a tough, tough starting hole. It's one of those ones that feels pretty reachable, but it also is kind of a nerve wracker on, on hole one. You know, you can definitely put up a big number if you're not careful. And I go in straight at it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that's in by an inch, Ella. Wow. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Holy moly. <sighs> this is a, a tough, the speed control on this green is really challenging. I think that's really the key. Um, I personally went with a forehand. I think that allowed me to just sort of come into the green more at an angle rather than the mid-range or putter play straight at it. Well, now it almost looked like Emily was laying that one up. Yeah, that was a... Uh, looked a little strange, honestly. I mean, I think it was hard to tell if she was laying it up or if she was going for it, but either way, unfortunately, out of bounds. And we've got four Innova players on this card, and this is a J from Evelina, one of their new straight mid ranges. And I like I like the height. I think you need to give it a little bit of height on this hole if you're throwing that backhand, so you give it time to slow down, but just pushing it a little bit long. I'm a little surprised to see Own going with the backhand instead of the forehand. I feel like there's a little bit more room for the backhand and that plays into her strengths pretty well. That might get back in. Oh, Yeah, she just kind of flattened that destroyer out a little more than she was hoping for and it proceeds straight to a drop zone. Is that for all OB? Yep. Or just short? All OB goes all to the drop OB zone. All OB to that drop zone. Um, it's a Fairly straightforward shot, approach shot, but again, that speed control with the green sloping away makes it. Oh, and yeah. Evelina knows right out of her hand. Just got on top of that putter. Yeah, and this drop zone is playing a, a rethrow. It's not a. If you go OB from the drop zone, I believe re you're rethrowing from the drop zone as well. So it's uh, challenging for sure. From this right here, to me, it looks in, but closer, it could be on, a, on it. Very, very close. But it's so trying to decide if yeah, Hannah's disc is in. Very close call. Kind of looks into me. Yeah, I feel like I would probably call that in, but... So I guess... Yeah, I guess they're playing where it, where it crossed up on the green. And there's a lot of interesting rules here at, at North Cove. And th this is a Disc Off Pro Tour Silver Series event. Uh, the men are here as well, but they are playing, of course, on the other side of this little road. This is the Boulders course. Across the street, the men are playing the Gorge. 
I'm seeing a lot of layups here. Oh, Hannah didn't want any of that <laughs> basket. Yeah, that's his, uh, yeah, this is one of those starting holes that can kind of put a, put a sour taste in your mouth mm. to start the round. And just to add some context, I'm on the course, uh, doing the, working with the disc golf network and, and they want me to do an on course walk and talk with <laughs> Evelina. I asked her before the hole if she was still willing and she said, we'll see after, after the first <laughs> hole. So I had to ask her again oh, no. <laughs> if she was okay doing the interview, Ella. Wow. So triple yeah. bogey, double bogey. And a par. Par, yep. <laughs> wow. Getting the whole array of scores One, two, there. Three, four. Uh, honestly, it feels good to just kind of get that first hole done, I think. That's probably one of the more scary holes on the course, and there's a lot of scoring opportunities on this course for FPO. It's only a par 60, so a lot of shorter holes. Um, here's one of, our, one of the par fours, 546 feet playing out over the creek. Um, you want to throw kind of a straight to hyzer shot out into this fairway area and then it's going to be a left to right forehand or turnover backhand if you want to get up and attack the green wouldn't be surprised to see some layups maybe not with this card but definitely some layups for some of the fpo field and this is um, you'll see this throughout the round a lot of greens very close to out of bounds especially with this creek yeah this is the north fork of the Catawba River and it's going to be one of the main features here on the boulders course excellent shot there from henna just that's exactly how you want to do it throw something stable straight give it enough height to hyzer out we were kind of coming into this round preparing for worst case scenario weather weren't we Ella absolutely and you can see the river is uh it's moving <laughs> It was, it had a little bit more water in it today than uh, earlier in the week in the practice round. We had a pretty rainy night. Um, so conditions on the course in general, a uh, little, little skippier, a little slippier, um, but there was a lot of rain in the forecast. So everyone in the field is out there with their rain flies and raincoats and umbrellas. Um, but as you can see this moment, it was pretty clear. There was a few moments of rain showers throughout the round but not too bad at all yeah turned out to be a pleasant day in the Catawba River Valley this hole heads back north and right off to the east is the Linville Gorge and then we're actually just underneath the shadow of where the Blue Ridge Parkway is yeah so just a beautiful part of the United States and own just dials up a beauty with that uh that flex forehand of hers. For sure. I was a little surprised to see her going with the forehand off the tee, but I think this, you know, kind of comes right in at her sweet spot for two max power flex forehands. She's just outside the bullseye, and, you know, I'm not worried about Owen making that kind of a putt. Leaves it circle's edge short. And those fins really love that standstill approach, yeah. don't they? Yep, and that's that's a very committed shot. You know, I think Henna is one of the best uh, approachers in the FPO field. Great putt there right in the edge of the circle from Emily, but you could see on Henna's approach shot just how much she's trusting that disc to be stable, throwing it just to the right of the basket, kind of towards the creek, and getting right up in the bullseye. Yeah, pretty committed putt there from Evelina. Oh, and grabbing a birdie along with Emily. A little bounce back there for both of them. Yeah, outside of this river, it's like a pretty quiet valley. I mean, I yeah. wasn't hearing a lot of birds, uh, not a lot of road noise. It's just a peaceful place. Yep absolutely very calm a lot of 
a lot of beauty out there. <laughs> Just loved seeing the clouds up in the in the hills and the mountains during this round. It was pretty foggy here yeah. this morning and couldn't quite see the peaks of the mountains. Yep. Taking another look at Emily's birdie putt. A nice pace on that one. Yeah. That's got to feel good. Get the first birdie in this. That hole is kind of one you want to get. Now this one, hole three, it's an, uh, another par three, 379 feet out of this tunnel, slightly downhill off of the tee. You really just want to avoid hitting any of those first trees um, and getting out into this gap. Uh, fairway kind of slopes back up towards the green on the left side and the green is a little bit of a roll away risk. Um, it's not too steep, but definitely gets in your mind a little bit. Mm. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> That's that. going past the basket. Look at this. That is a smash. That's so That's good. That's 410 feet. She's putting circle's edge back at it. That's a great shot. Oof. That's, yeah. <laughs> you can't really do it much better than that. So Emily playing a little more conservative, throwing a little shorter, just trying to get out of the gap. Pretty tough turnover backhand from that angle. And Owen also just getting out of the gap, throwing a forehand. Yeah, kind of conceding the par there. Yeah. Yeah, this is a tough tough get, I think. There's not going to be uh, a whole lot of the field birdieing it, but maybe a couple oh. people on this card yeah, with the way Valina these drives are shaping up. Also just smashing this destroyer, wow. and she's going to also go past pin high. And it's pretty hard to impress Ella Hansen. And <laughs> <laughs> Those are two, They've two done great it. shots. Oh, oh, wow. I believe there was a, another throw-in on this hole um, earlier in the day. or not, right. Another one. There was a throw-in. I, I don't know who it was, but it was on the card in front of me. So okay. it was pretty fun to see. Yeah, so Emily and Owen just pitching up. It's so wide open once you get out of that gap that if you're not confident about your shot, makes sense. I, I understand the the par play. Oh, <laughs> just nestles it on the left side of the chains. That's a great birdie to get. That's a uh, Potena at two down through three. Awesome start. Oh. That's a tough bogey after such a smooth putt on the second. Yeah. That's one, especially when when you're feeling like you're being responsible and pitching up for a par. When it doesn't work out, it feels feels pretty crappy, I think, sometimes. So one birdie, one bogey, and two pars for our feature card. I think it just caught that left side nub. Did you? And stayed in. Yeah. Oh, it did. <laughs> did you catch that grip there? I did just not. Just barely holding on to the edge of the rim, and we're gonna take a quick peek at the scores through three. Kristen, off to a hot start. Sarah Hokum, couple others at two down. This looks perfect. Off the basket. Now it's rolling. It's headed for the OB. This needs to sit. Oh my goodness, it's safe. Right on the line. She's gonna have about a 30 foot putt for the win. Okay, here we go. The putt is up. Boom, it's in. Strong side with authority. What an incredible moment. Yes. Yeah, if you want to keep it in the fairway on a wooded course, throw a Wombat 3. Oh, 
hope for here on the Boulders, Boulders course is a par three playing over this, over the river. And uh, it's, it's not too long, only 276 feet. There's a couple plays you can throw a wide forehand hyzer at the left side or lefty backhand for someone like Emily Beach. Um, there's kind of this straight at it play, maybe with a putter uh, and Yep, OB down in in the creek on the right, close to the basket, probably only, you know, 15 feet and that kind of rock wall behind. That is safe, but makes it challenging. Yeah, this hole descends about 10 feet from tee to green and it's oh, got a couple yeah. guardian trees and Hannah finds one there. I believe that might have been a little too turned over. Yeah. And so she's re-teeing. That looks a little better. Oh, man. Oh, stop Sit rolling. Sit down. Unfortunate reaction wow. there. And you can kind of, with that straight shot, you can sort of play those rocks as a backstop, but obviously <laughs> might not always end up the way you want. Not surprised to see Owen going with a forehand here. Pushing it a little bit long. She may have a bit of an obstructed putt behind those rocks. Ooh, good looking line here. <sighs> Off the basket. Oh my gosh. No, is that out of bounds? Is that? So this is, I believe, one of the holes that does not have a string string line out oh, of bounds and that's out of bounds that but is man. i mean nearly an ace hits yeah. the bottom of the cage and that's i think one of the dangers of of the more straight out of play as we saw with henna as well oh that seems <laughs> early but gets a fortunate skip yeah the nice thing about that that forehand or lefty hyzer is you're covering in bounds the whole way so even if you do go out of bounds you'll have you know a putt <laughs> to save your par so this is henna for bogey wolf emily just quickly pitching that one up and normal OB rules do apply here. Evelina will be putting for par from right around 22 feet. A distance that she's been struggling with for yes. a couple of seasons now, Ella. Man, it's tough to see. I mean, I think mentally she's not the only one to have issues with putting but it certainly you can I just tell how much she cares about it what what advice would you give to evelina it's tough i mean you know i can't see inside her brain mm -hmm. as you can see there with that putt it's not that she doesn't have the mechanics to make the putt mm -hmm. i think you know what's helped me is just kind of simplifying and thinking about making it just a forward motion more so rather than any any sort of left to right can kind of throw off your brain or throw off your release point but it is tough it is really tough it's 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 got to be excruciating for her and it's it's tough for us to watch you know because we know how much she cares i mean she's traveling yeah. halfway across the world to play in these tournaments she throws the disc extremely well. Yes. And then she's she's three and four putting, you know, a few times a tournament. So we're all rooting for you, Evelina. <laughs> Absolutely. Just, just know that. Absolutely. Headed back toward the river here. Just a short walk to hole five. What do we got, Ella? We've got another par three, 261. Might be one of the shortest holes on the course. Most players, it's playing as a, a putter, mid-range, probably hyzer, just trying to nestle up uh, right underneath the basket. It's pretty wide open green. There is that river behind. 
uh, probably at about 20 feet. So it is in play if you push it a little too long. Doesn't look like quite enough hyzer for own, but gets a good roll. Puts her inside the circle, it looks like. This one, you can just see the, the flag stick from the tee pad. So even though it's a short one, you don't always know what happened to your disc after it gets over that hill. But Emily Beach, just that, that lefty hyzer gap is a little smaller, but she does not make it look small. Oh, <laughs> chill. And you could hear the audible snap on Henna's hyzer right there. Puts that mid-range to 18 feet. Oh, Sit. another unfortunate little reaction right there. Yeah. That's tough. I think you want to play the hyzer on this one fairly wide, knowing that it's going to get a little bit of skip on the green. <laughs> there it is. There's the... <laughs> There's own. <laughs> hey, so it's been a great mystery to us, Ella. How does she make the putter wobble? <laughs> I honestly, I have no idea. I've tried to recreate it. I, I can't do it. I don't know. Maybe you it, need it's to moving forward faster than it's rotating. Yeah. I think is a part of it, but yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to propel the disc forward without spinning it. Right. It's like right. her. Jay Redding, yeah. James Conrad, who else? Missy Gannon kind of yeah, wobbles yeah. it. Yep. Yep. I mean, man, Owen's putting. I don't think I see anybody else putt like her, but one of the she best makes putters I've ever seen, MPO or FPO, and um, not to overlook Evelina's birdie. <laughs> Just see that. But but how does it wobble? How? How? It's a mystery. If you guys know, leave us a comment <laughs> below. And w we all carded birdies right there. That was yep. four birdies for that this card. Awesome. Awesome for the card. Got to feel good for Evelina getting <laughs> that putting confidence back a little bit there. Hole six is pretty tough. Par three, 345 feet all the way straight alongside the creek. There is an OB line that comes up fairly far up off the river uh, and this cart path that if you hit at the wrong angle, you could definitely get an unfortunate skip into the river. So I would say you, you, you really don't want to see your disc hit that cart path. No, at you all. really don't. You really don't. This is a, this is one that I don't think a lot of the FPO field is planning on birdieing this big hyzer out to the right of that tree. Maybe not quite that I wide, but is that just because <laughs> the the distance uh, on hyzer? You think I feel like 345. A lot of the FPO is getting there, but is mm -hmm. it just because they're forced into this hyzer? No, I don't think you you can definitely get there with the straight shot. I think the straight shot is even more open than the hyzer, mm -hmm. but hyzer just might feel a little bit safer. For me, I know I know I can get there 345 on a hyzer, so I'm okay with playing it out wide, but you can just see that OB line is right lined up in the middle of the tee pad. So it's like, if you just miss release a little bit, you may not even push too far down there and could, could get a big number quick. So I think the hyzer is just more of a, a safe play. <laughs> and Hina pushes that destroyer out to pin high, but she's about 40 feet right. And this looks a little better. Oh, oh, man, hitting no. the path. Oh, and that's exactly why you want to avoid that sidewalk. Just rainbow skips, and that's just six inches into the river. Yeah, that cart path is exactly the only spot, the only, you know, six feet you don't want to hit. Yeah, she hits just short of that. She's going to be in circle one and Absolutely. just past that, and she could have just pinned the hole. Yep. Own oh, just laying up. She didn't quite cross the path. Emily gets down there into the rocks. Another kind of circle's edge layup. 
Yeah, it was about 45, but another layup from Henna. Yeah, I'm laying up that putt all day, I think, <laughs> unless yeah. it's unless I need to be charging. But it's a very, that's like, if you miss it, you're going out of bounds. It's a, it's a pretty scary death putt from there. Evelina with an opportunity to save her par. There it is. Good save for her. Yeah, a couple nice putts in a row. A couple of unfortunate breaks in the last three holes. And this doesn't look too obstructed, but there are a couple of opportunities on this course where if you end up on the wrong side of the basket, you may be <laughs> unable to see part of it or even all of it with, you know, the the boulders course does stand up to its name. Yeah. And here we go. The elusive wobble putt. <laughs> it it really never strays from the pole. I yeah. had a chance to speak with own today. She said that minimum two hundred putts a day. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, 300 putts, mm -hmm. sometimes 400 putts a wow. day. And she's she's putting. She's got herself a stack of old AVRs, you know, like I think 8 or 10 years old. Like she sticks with those putters and she loves them. All right. Hole four, hole seven, excuse me, par four, 506 feet crossing this creek. If you don't cross, there is this drop zone, but most players are looking to just get out into this field and probably the most unique green on the course tucked up into this rock outcropping you this is one where you definitely do not want to go long but uh very picturesque very fun hole it just adds a little little spice to the hole i, I really like this one yeah how how far is it to clear this to clear the river uh, it's only like 250 only, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's not too far. I mean, I think everybody in the FPO field can clear it comfortably. And, and for you on a hole like this, are, are you thinking about giving yourself a little putt? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to throw a maximum distance shot, but um, in practice, I got up to about 70 feet a couple times. It's definitely in the realm of possibility. Oh my gosh, that is crushed. If that stays up, oh, wow. that is so impressive. And that's in that, that's in that within a hundred foot range. I mean, she might have a putt and gosh, stay up, man. If that had just had a little bit more highs around it when it hit the ground, it could have skipped way up there, but <laughs> It's just, it's so cool that Hina and Evelina are best friends from Finland and their games are, they're really similar. Yeah, they are. You can tell that they, they, they must play they together all the time. They push each other. They are both inspirations for each other. They travel, they spend every day together. Yeah, yeah. They are both incredible players. And you called it. This is right inside 100 feet here. And, and, this and really, is, there's no danger in running right. this one. You just give it a run. <laughs> Which, and it looks like she's doing. Man. Little unfortunate roll there off that rock, but still inside the circle. And, man, this is a frustrating hole to par if you have as good of a drive as Evelina did. I mean, it's a catcher's mitt. Yeah. For the oh. baseball lover over here. <laughs> Are you, you must be pretty excited that the season just started up. I am. I'm always, always happy watching baseball. Loving, <laughs> loving it. So Emily able to cash on that birdie opportunity so there, there's all this paint and there's like a, even a little drop zone right there what's up with that ella i don't really know i, 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 I kind of assume that if you're up on top you i think if you're you up on top play. you go down to there yeah that makes sense yeah, right? and they're they're now discussing 
if you feel yeah, comfortable with that. Oh, I see. So wear that orange. Uh, that yeah, orange you can take relief if your disc is way up underneath that that's, that hole. That's pretty smart. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to <laughs> deal with that on my card, but uh, yeah. It can it gets a little little tight down there. We're not all little garden gnomes, you know. <laughs> Can't <laughs> fit in there. Nice brace and rotate there from Emily. Yeah. Emily is a, you know, you don't necessarily see it on the same holes because she is a lefty, but she can absolutely rip. She's got a lot of power. Hole 8, it's another par 3, 303 feet downhill. Through this gap, there is a, a double mando. It's not that tiny gap. It's two trees wider. So this straight through the middle gap is is the main option. But there are a couple possibilities of kind of trying to sneak a backhand or forehand under some trees. Um, and this is another one elevated. There is a bit of a creek behind, but um, on this hole, that plays as casual. There is no out of bounds except for those those two mandos. Yeah, this hole descends about twelve feet from T to green. Pretty significant downhill shot. And again, heading down toward the river. You can sort of see that gap that Owen was going for. Oh, and, oh man. Good reaction off of that tree, putting a, her out into the open. That's a tight little pocket that Emily was aiming yeah. for over there on the left side. Yeah. It sure is. And these trees, yeah, like I said, there are a couple little pockets on the left and right, but they're very low ceiling. Oh, well, I think she just barely made that mando. Yep, cleared through the mando. Yeah, yeah, you it, yeah. It's a pretty it's a pretty small gap there. Fortunately, like as long as you don't kick and miss a mando, most of these spots on this hillside you can get up and down from. Evelina throwing a nice forehand there into circle one. And Emily is really pinched up against this tree. Yeah, I maybe I spoke back. too soon saying that it's easy to get up and down from that hillside. I mean, she's giving herself a look. A look to save par there. Another standstill approach from Henna. Just catching that last guardian tree, but putting her into the middle of the circle. Emily just laying up, taking the bogey. Again, kind of another one you'd feel a little, feel like you really want to get a par on. It's so seems so accessible <laughs> heck yeah evelina and she misses one on the seventh but she's made three really solid putts from outside of 20 feet it's got to be confidence booster for her. for sure and you know missing some putts obviously is frustrating but oh man being able to make those bounce back stats, those sort of comebackers, gotta help with that confidence for sure. And Ev Evelina was actually in a in a place where she was so traumatized by where her putt was at that she actually she actually avoided practice mm -hmm. because she didn't you know she didn't want to feel that way anymore. Yeah, I mean honestly, I think that. Clearly, you know, hundreds of putts a day work for own, but I yeah. think that for some people, you absolutely can over practice and really get inside your own head in a way that is not productive. So, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem with that strategy. I think giving yourself some distance and uh, 
not getting too in your head is a, is a good strategy. Hole nine, the last hole here on the front nine. One of the tougher ones, uh, a par three, 378 feet. It's gonna play as a big backhand flex shot for most players. And one of the toughest greens on the course, up really high up on this steep hillside that's you know scattered with rocks. So it's not really a comfortable layup even if you are laying up. Very challenging green, tough shot. Really have to make sure you get a lot of flex and turn on your drive so you don't get caught up early left. And this is this is a diabolical green. Absolutely. There is just <laughs> more rollaway potential here than anywhere else on the bowler's course. And, and this oh, this tree right here forces the player to to shape something absolutely and and there's also a bit of a ceiling so 378 is kind of a tough ask with yeah. this low ceiling in the shape yeah i think this is a hole i actually really love i love the shape of it i think the green like you said is a little diabolical but i think this uh really forces a shot shape um even on an open hole like this and i think it's a pretty cool design you could sort of see where both own and Evelina went on their shots. That looks so oh. good. <laughs> oh, but she's going to catch the right side of that hill. And oh, that is, no. that's what you typically see. Yeah. The you, best, the best you can get on this hole is really down on that, that path on the cart path. But as you can see, own and Evelina is also going to be pretty pinched over here. There, the rough gets pretty thick up on the left side. I was in a very similar spot to Evelina today, and I was very happy to have a nice layup that stuck right on the top of the hill and yeah. have it tap in for par. Par plays here on the ninth, especially yeah. with a lot of scoring opportunities coming up. Absolutely, and I think... This is a pretty good example of just how this course plays out. There's a lot of holes where even a layup is scary and really forces you to have have confidence in all of your shots, not just your drives, but layups and putts and all of the above. And, and own left herself a circle's edge putt, leaves it low, and then left with that for her single bogey and she's going to be tapping in a double bogey oh man and sometimes you just see like these discs must have a mind of their own just tilting up like looking like they might sit and yeah. then nope all of a sudden rolling all the way down the hill it feels it feels so personal absolutely <laughs> you're like no it, it was done rolling Yep. Why did it have to do that? Yep. Especially it, sometimes, man, if somebody else on your card gets those good luck <laughs> sit downs on the top of the hill and you're rolling every which way. And that angle, I mean, it you can't quite tell how steep it really is on camera, but from the bottom of that hill, that basket is not very big vertically you know you really gotta make sure you get your height control right to get over the rim and not catch the band so we've seen <laughs> definitely some of the diabolical nature of this green on display with this feature card pretty interesting front nine though i mean one of the better settings that we have honestly absolutely one of the best disc golf settings on the east coast and yeah I, I mean i didn't know what to expect out of this course i was like it's a silver series i'm signed up you know let's go and i've been really impressed with the way that this property is set up just the beauty of it and it's been a been a good experience so far so after nine holes some struggles for our feature card here own with a 
very clean seven holes surrounded by two doubles and a lot of other extra strokes for this card. Kristen Tatar. Ooh, five down on the front. <laughs> that is hot. Sarah and Hannah Wynn, both four under, and Jessica Weiss and our very own Ella. <laughs> nice work on the front, Ella. Thank you. And thank you guys for joining us here for this Central Coast Disc Golf production, and we will see you for part two.